Hello guys and gals, Buffalo here. Welcome back to the range. Today I've got my brand new current production Smith & Wesson 317 kit gun out. For those of you that don't know what a 317 is, it is a double action, single action, eight shot, 22 long rifle chambered revolver. The current production ones have a three inch barrel. They are built on the J frame which is the smallest frame that Smith & Wesson currently produces. And they're a mostly aluminum alloy revolver. The frame is aluminum, the cylinder is aluminum, the barrel shroud is aluminum. Now it does have steel parts where it has to have them. Of course it has a stainless steel barrel sleeve. You see that very thin sleeve there in the middle? That's your stainless steel barrel. Got a steel ejector rod of course your fire control components are going to be steel basically they use steel where they had to and aluminum alloy everywhere that they could get by with to keep this gun as light as possible you can see it says air light here on the side and air light it is they advertise the weight of this gun at 11.7 ounces on smith and wesson's website and according to my scale, it's exactly 11.7 ounces. It has what Smith & Wesson refers to as a matte silver finish. Give you guys a look at that finish on both sides of the gun here. A little different looking where it's an aluminum alloy revolver. But I think it looks good has a high-vis fiber optic front sight pinned in place and a v-notch rear sight that is fully adjustable your elevation adjustment is on top your windage adjustment is on the right side it does have the keyhole lock, so the revolver comes with a key. You can lock this gun up and render it useless if you want to, for, a, for whatever reason you might want to do that. Most people I know just kind of toss that key to the back of the safe and forget about it, but that's totally up to you. It does have a lightning cut along the bottom of the trigger guard, and if you were to remove this grip, that lightning cut runs all the way down the grip. You can see that groove starts here in front of the trigger guard and runs all the way down the front strap. And that has no other purpose other than to keep this revolver as light as possible. I'm gonna talk about this trigger for a minute. So I've went ahead and put some snap caps in. I don't like to dry fire my rim fires without a snap cap or something like that in place to help protect the edge of that chamber. So, as I said, this is a double action, single action revolver, meaning you can fire it either way, however you choose to do it. You can cock the hammer and take advantage of the lighter, cleaner trigger pull. Makes the gun a little easier to be on target with. Or you can just pull the trigger and let it do all the work of cocking the hammer and releasing it, uh, however you want to fire it. The single action trigger pull on this thing measures about three and a half pounds according to my Lyman trigger scale. And honestly, I would have guessed it lighter than that. I would have guessed it, uh, I would have thought it was just under three pounds. It's very clean, a uh, very nice trigger. The double action comes in right at 12 pounds, which is the limit of my Lyman scale. And it, to me, it feels lighter than 12 pounds. It feels like about a 10 pound trigger to me. So it's a very smooth, very nice trigger and it feels better than the numbers actually show. Just my opinion. So if you're picking one of these revolvers up and you plan on shooting a lot of double action with it, just remember that it's probably gonna take a lot of practice. You've got a 12 pound trigger pull on a 12 ounce firearm. So you're gonna have to be really good with your fundamentals. You're gonna have to have a good trigger stroke you're going to have to keep those sights aligned all the way through the trigger pull. I guess what I'm trying to say is the weight 
of this firearm is not going to help you any. It's not going to be very forgiving at all. As far as the cylinder to forcing cone gap goes, as you can see here, I've got an 8 thousandths of an inch filler gauge, and I've got a 9 thousandths of an inch filler gauge. We'll look at the gap here. I can't get the 9 thousandths filler gauge to go, but I can get the 8 thousandths to go. It's a really snug fit, but it will go. So I'm going to call that gap 8 thousandths of an inch. And that is within spec. Now, on a steel revolver, personally, I prefer to see the cylinder gap between four and six thousandths of an inch. But on these 317s, they've got this aluminum cylinder, and I see a lot of people having trouble with the cylinder binding after they get a little bit of carbon built up on it. I'm actually glad to see it a little bit on the larger end than on the smaller end of the spectrum on this particular revolver. Look at that. Those things are terrible this year. I can't stand a tick. Okay, so something you guys need to be aware of. This video has been recorded over a period of several weeks. I didn't just sit down in one day and do this video. But today I came down here and started shooting this revolver. And the first thing I needed to do was sit down at the bench and get an idea of if my sights were actually zeroed or not. Turns out, at 10 yards, it was shooting low and left, so I had to adjust that rear V-notch. I had to shift it to the right and bring it up a little bit in elevation. You can probably tell that it's shifted to the right there. I can't see it very good from this angle. I hope the camera is showing it to you guys there. But anyway, I had to make some adjustments, and I got it on target at 10 yards, and here's what that looks like. See what we've got here. All right, so I've got four together right there, and then one right at the foot of the X. So I could come up just a little bit on my elevation. They're all within an inch right there. Looks like I do need to come up just a little bit. So I ended up not making any adjustments to that rear sight after that group. What I did is I went ahead and decided to take the target out to 20 yards and shoot a group at 20 yards and see if my point of impact changed just leaving the sights where they were at. And this is how that turned out. Haven't had any extraction issues at all so far. Let's go check that group out. Some of you may ask, why five shot groups? You've got an eight shot revolver there. Why not shoot eight shot groups? Well, chalk it up to one of my many quirks. I happen to like five shot groups. So just looking at the ring here, 
that's about a three inch group one two three four five shots one right in the x too high too low so at 20 yards i don't need to change my elevation any my group is well centered vertically and horizontally it looks like so i'm just going to leave those sights where they're at might be just a touch low at 10 but it looks like it makes up for it at 20 so i'm okay with that now a three inch group is not terrible for an ultralight three inch barreled revolver at 20 yards you know that's that's good shooting but i'm telling you if it wasn't for that v-notch rear sight i could tighten that up quite a bit i just have a lot of trouble with that v-notch rear I, I don't get along with it so i'm okay with those groups i feel like i could shoot the gun better as i said if it wasn't for that v-notch rear sight i much prefer just a regular old uh, square notch with the square notch you've got two light bars one on either side of the front sight you just even the light on either side and you know you're centered with the v-notch i struggle with that i struggle getting my light even on either side of the sight and even vertically so that's just me some of you guys might like the rear v-notch sight obviously somebody likes them smith and wesson keeps putting putting them on this little revolver i saw a number of reviews uh, this is a gun that i wanted for years so i've watched a lot of reviews on it and a lot of guys have problems with their sights shooting high i don't seem to have that issue at least not with that ammunition so at least at least that my sights are usable so i'm not going to complain too much and you know to be fair i did know that it had the v-notch rear sight on it before i bought the revolver and i already knew that i didn't like the v-notch and i still bought it so part of that's on me i can live with it i shoot it well enough that i think i can live with it i just i would prefer the square notch so let's move on let's have some fun shoot some other stuff now I'm going to shoot some double action here. I've got that little three inch steel target hanging out there. See if I can put some lid on it. I think I got them all but one. The synthetic grip is actually pretty nice. It's a good compromise between keeping the gun as light as possible and giving you a nice grip to get a hold of. I can get two full fingers on it and most of my pinky. revolver kit gun like this is very versatile of course it's chambered for 22 long rifle but you can shoot shorts longs long rifle shot shells uh, you can shoot a variety of ammunition to suit your needs i've got it loaded up with eight shorts So with it being a Smith & Wesson J-frame, holsters and accessories and things like that are easy to get for it. I just grabbed me one of these little Amazon holsters that I use for all of my little kit guns and trail guns like that. These little leather holsters that have the paddle on them. It's got the groove so that you can wear it with a belt or without. I, I don't wear a belt a lot of times in the summertime. I, I usually wear a belt all, all the cooler months, but in the summertime I don't, so that way I can carry the holster without the belt as well just pretty good little holsters for what they are but you can find stuff like that just about anywhere for the little smith and wesson j frames like i said i got that one off of amazon but uh probably pick one up just about anywhere 
So I'm going to try to make a few hits out there at 60 yards on that larger steel target. <laughs> Not too bad. I think I dropped one of those. I'm going to shoot some of these CCI shot shells through it. A lot of people use these for snakes and things like that. Just remember if you're shooting these, you have to be really close. They don't have much range to them at all. course being a revolver it's going to run them just fine didn't think i was going to let that one get away did you this is ammunition that i've kept back over the years that i've found in the floorboard of my truck and stuff like that so it's all different brands different types so you may notice a difference in the report of this ammo from one shot to the next and some of it's really old too I thought I'd shoot it up revolvers are good for that you don't got to worry about them cycling or anything if you're looking at one of these revolvers by the way for use as a recreational gun something you're going to take to the range every now and then or or maybe on a day hike with you I'd actually recommend the model 63 the model 63 in a nutshell is the stainless steel version of this revolver and for most people I think it's going to be a better choice just uh, the, the extra weight is not always a bad thing the extra weight makes the revolver more shootable easier to shoot and hit the target than this ultralight now if you're one of those guys that cuts the handle off your toothbrush to save weight on a hiking trip well, if you're one of those guys, you, you probably don't have a gun in your kit anyway. <laughs> but, but let's say you do want to save as much weight as you can and, and have a gun and some ammo in your kit. This might be the gun for you. It's, it's ultra light. The ammunition is light for it. Just this might be the trick right here. All right, so over the course of the last few weeks, I've put about 600 to 650 rounds through this little revolver. And I don't really have any, any big negatives to report. I haven't had a lot of the problems that I saw other people have with it. Thank goodness, I'm, maybe I got lucky there. But I was able to zero my sights to my point of impact. I've heard a lot of people complain that they weren't able to do that with their 317 haven't had any cylinder binding whatsoever uh, extraction has not been an issue now it does get stiff sometimes uh, it, it takes a pretty good amount of force to push them out but by no means has it been like like froze up or anything like that did have a few light primer strikes when i say a few i mean exactly three because i remember them all and they were all three with cci standard velocity oddly enough and I did shoot a lot more of this stuff than I did anything else. So maybe it was just because I shot more of it that that's what I had the issues with. But we, we did shoot some other ammunition as well. I say we, my wife and my son and I have been shooting this revolver over the past few weeks. Uh, shot a lot of the Federal bulk pack stuff. We shot some Remington Golden Bullets, some Winchester White Box. Just tried to mix it up as best we could. And like I say, no real issues to report. The gun's shooting fine. Uh, we all, all of us that have shot it, like the revolver, so I'm glad I got it. They are kind of expensive. MSRP on this thing is $826, and I actually see them going for close to that. I see them going for around $800. Uh, 
uh, at a lot of places. Uh, just looking be from before working on this video, I kind of like to look around and see what things are going for. I actually paid uh, about $703 for this one brand new. And I didn't realize that it was a good deal at the time. But now looking at the prices that are out there, that, that was actually a pretty good deal. So I'm glad I jumped on it when I did. I've wanted one of these for a long time, but the negative reviews have, have kind of steered me away from it and always made me leery of it. And uh, not saying that those negative reviews aren't well earned. Uh, obviously, people have had problems with these. But I got lucky and uh, maybe I got a good one here. I will certainly let you guys know down the road if something happens, if, if something changes, and this, this thing starts rearing its head in some way or another, I will certainly make an update video and let you know. But out of the first 600 rounds, so far, so good. But that's really, I guess that's about all I've got today. Appreciate you guys hanging out at the range with me. Um, appreciate you guys that support the channel over on Patreon. It means a lot to me. Uh, it helps me keep these videos going. And I always remember that when somebody asks you to give up a little bit of your freedom for the greater good, that freedom is the greater good. But that's all I got, and I'll talk with y'all again soon.